You know, Matt, I don't really feel like filming today. Let's, uh, what do you think about going day drinking? <laughs> that sounds amazing. All right, well, let's uh, get ready to go, all right? No, no, we, we can do it right here. <laughs> Dude. Nice, do you have a chaser? Huh. Cool. That'll work. That'll work. So the Chaser was announced in 2018 at SHOT Show, guys. We saw it there. Very interesting little gun. Caught my eye for sure. Uh, we have the 22 caliber available here uh, that we are going to be reviewing for you guys, both in the pistol and rifle configuration, but it's also offered in 177, so you have the ability to choose. But the Chaser as a whole, guys, really interesting offering into Diana's action line. Now, that is their more cost-friendly uh, kind of entry-level line, if you will. Uh, the Storm Rider falls in that line as well. Now, these guns are made in China. Uh, Diana doesn't try and hide that fact, guys. These are, uh, you know, not something that you are going to get for the price point if it was made in Germany. So starting with the Chaser pistol, guys, this is how it comes right out of the box ready to go. So you have your fixed front post sight, you have an adjustable rear sight, so fully adjustable for windage and elevation. Uh, of course, you do have a rifled barrel on this guy, you have your CO2 storage cylinder down here, uh, your piercing cap here, which will show you how that works in just a minute. And then on the left hand side of the action, you have your bolt action. Now this is a bigger bolt than what we see on the Storm Rider. The Gen 2 Storm Riders are actually coming with this. So this is nice. Uh, gives you a lot more purchase on that bolt. And it's a very easy bolt action uh, to get back there nice and smooth. And then we do have also our single shot tray. This is again, same thing as the Storm Rider here. So if you lose it, they're readily available. Uh, but you can slide it out and pop in a seven round magazine here in 22 again the same magazines as the storm rider uses so you're starting to see guys there's a theme here of interchangeable parts within this action line that diana has out and it's really nice uh, the ability to have those parts readily available and the fact that they work for multiple guns is a huge plus in my book uh, and obviously the fact that it is multi-shot capable is a big plus as well Taking a look at the trigger, guys, this is what Diana calls their DIT trigger or Diana Improved Trigger. Uh, improved over what I don't know because this is the first version we've seen here of the Chaser in the U.S. Uh, that said, the one gripe I will tell you right off the bat just looking over the pistol I have is that the safety is on the trigger. Uh, you can kind of see the red ring there so you know it's hot and ready to go now if it was cocked. So you press that little button on through there and that renders the trigger safe. Can't pull it, doesn't go anywhere and then you can just pop it on through, you get that red ring again, and you're good to go. Giving it a try here, it's not too bad. There's a little bit of take up, uh, but not a very heavy trigger. So uh, pretty impressed with that just off that first initial feel. Uh, talking about some of the other features here, you'll notice that you have this kind of thumb screw here on the bottom of the grip. So we are gonna take that off. Now this is a really unique feature. Uh, the Chaser Rifle Kit actually comes with a butt stock that you can attach here, and we'll show you guys how to assemble all that when we get there. But the nice thing about this is that you can carry a spare CO2 cartridge in the butt stock of the grip, which is awesome. Uh, as you guys probably know, if you've watched some of our videos, I like the little things. It's the little details that make me like a gun, uh, and they nailed this. All right, guys, so let's talk about how to load CO2 into this guy real quick. I'm going to put the gun on safe here, and I'm going to go ahead and take off the piercing cap. Now, as I do that, I do want to point out to you guys that you do have this open port here on the side. Uh, you can do that because the CO2 is actually held captive on the seal, so it's not flooding the cylinder and creating, you know, a, a actual CO2 filled cylinder. Uh, and that's actually nice for a couple reasons. It makes it a lot easier to degas as well. You don't have to shoot it down. You can actually just bleed it out. Um, but you will always know if you have a CO2 cartridge in the gun. So if you get it out of storage or something like that, uh, and maybe it had CO2 in it, you forgot to take it out before you put it away. That's nice to know. Um, so now to go ahead and pierce it, this is pretty easy to do guys, but I do want to point you to one thing. On the end of the piercing cap, there's this little knurled screw that you pull out. Now this is there to help you tighten this down. So once we get it kind of started there, so I can get a little bit more leverage on it, I just go ahead and put that screw right in the end of the hole on the piercing cap, and then I can really start to turn. It's a lot easier with that on there. And I just heard it go guys. 
So we are now ready to roll with CO2 and I can just slide that back in the front. This will also help you take it off if you need to, you know, if you have to let some CO2 out, if you have a little bit left over before putting it away for storage. So now that we have the pistol all loaded with CO2 and ready to go, uh, your lucky day today, we are going to be testing both the pistol and the rifle version side by side, but first have to show you how to put the rifle configuration together. So let's take a look at that. When you get the rifle set up, it's a kit, okay? So it comes as the pistol, time to convert it to the rifle. So you can run it either way, you can kind of run it in between as well. It's, there's a few unique things you can do with this setup. Uh, you could run it, you know, with the pistol barrel and the buttstock, lots of stuff you could do. So uh, first things first, I like to start with assembling the buttstock because it's really easy to do. So we just take out that screw again, slide off that back strap, and then we take our buttstock, looks just like this. Uh, you can throw your extra CO2 in there if you want to, you don't have to, of course, and it just kind of fits right on in there. Nice and easy. Goes together like that, and then you simply replace your screw at the bottom. And now you kind of have your carbine configuration before we go full rifle. We're going to go ahead and switch out the pistol barrel for the rifle barrel. Now, uh, I've already pre-loosened these two screws here. You don't have to remove them fully. You just have to get that tension off the barrel. But you do have to fully remove this middle screw here, and I'll show you why in a, just a second. Uh, but of course, guys, before you ever work on your gun, before you start removing parts or anything, you always want to make sure there's no CO2 in it. And with that little window, I can verify there's no CO2 in it. The gun's on safe, and I'm ready to do work. So once we have that middle screw removed, guys, we can go ahead and pull our barrel right out. Now, I have heard some reports of these being very tight, so you may have to lock this guy in a vise and actually pull it, you know, apart from the rifle. Uh, but just make sure you're not going to do any damage to the barrel. Shouldn't be that difficult to do. Next step, we are going to install the barrel band onto the gun. Now, a couple things about the barrel band here. You'll notice it does have a rear sight blade on it. Uh, and that is obviously to replace this sight because once you throw that longer barrel on there, this is going to be way too close to your eye to get a solid sight picture. So you do have that sight. It is removable just like the Storm Rider sight. If you don't want it there, you want to mount a scope. And also really cool, another little small feature that they nailed on this one. You have a little Picatinny section under here if you want to mount a bipod, a light, a laser, whatever you guys want. That's right there, which is an awesome little add-on. Uh, we're just going to slide that guy over. Now, we're not going to tighten it down just yet uh, because we got to make sure that we have it aligned properly with the barrel. So the next thing we're going to do is take our barrel and slide it through the top portion. Kind of line things up on the back end. Now, I like to do this with the bolt closed, guys, to make sure that everything is seating properly, that the bolt's going into the barrel, uh, and then I'm not going to have any issues, you know, once I try to close the bolt after I get everything installed. Uh, so once I have that done, I can kind of manipulate the barrel band to the position I want it to be in. Uh, right here is fine for me, so I am going to take this, I'm going to take our larger Allen key that comes with the gun, and I'm just going to tighten down this set screw here to set this guy in place. All right, so once the barrel band is tightened up, we can go ahead and cinch our screws in for our barrel back down. Now again, you want to make sure that that indent, that indexing point on the barrel is properly aligned with that center hole, and then go ahead and get your center screw back started. Make sure that one's nice and tight. That's the important one. That's what's doing the bulk of the work, retaining that barrel. Once you have that locked in, go ahead and do the front and the back. Once we get those screws nice and tight, guys, you just want to make sure that your bolt is moving through and into the barrel and seating down into that retention slot right here. Uh, nice and solid that you're not getting any you know, slop or difficulty pushing it forward. Uh, very important. The last thing we do need to show you guys how to do, guys, is removing the pistol rear sight. So to get the rear sight, the pistol rear sight, off of the gun, you are going to need a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips head. Now I have one that kind of flips around, so I have both. Yeah, so that'll work out nicely. So we're just going to go ahead and remove the flathead screw in the top of the sight. Now I'm holding this guy down, and the reason I'm doing that is because it's there's a nice spring under there that keeps it under tension. So I'm going to carefully remove that spring as well. I'm going to flip this guy over to the Phillips head side. I'm going to remove the front screw. And then flip that up again, and there's another screw right underneath it here. And your sight just comes right off. 
but now you are ready to go, ready to shoot this thing. We're gonna throw a CO2 cartridge in it and head out to the range. Uh, guys, just the initial feel with this, it's a very lightweight package, like two pounds. Uh, the rifle configuration is the one I was excited about personally, uh, and I love the fact that the bolt is on the left-hand side of the, of the gun here. It makes it really easy to cycle. If you threw that Storm Rider magazine in this thing, you're gonna have follow-up shots super quick. You're just gonna be bang, bang, right there. Very easy to operate. Let's go see if she shoots. One last thing I should mention, guys, before we head out to the range, uh, both guns do come with a soft case, so you have a slightly smaller one for the pistol and this larger one for the rifle. They do have a nice inside pocket here that unzips uh, that you can hold your parts in, although for the rifle version, guys, you'll notice it's not gonna quite fit, even if you did uh, pull the butt stock off with that longer barrel and suppressor on there. It's not going to fit all by itself. So uh, if you do want to keep it as a rifle, definitely going to need another case. But if you're looking to keep the pistol and all the parts in something, comes with it. So that's a nice little feature as well. All right, guys, so we did all of our accuracy work for both the pistol with the open sights and the rifle with the red dot at 15 yards. 15 yards seemed to be about the sweet spot uh, for both guns. At 10, I was doing really well, you know, everything sub one inch. Uh, at 20, though, things were opening up quite a bit and dropping off pretty extremely. So uh, we ended up finding that H&N pellets in both guns shot really well, better than everything else. Uh, so I have the field target trophy powers here, five shots in about an inch and a quarter. And then also the H&N Barracuda Hunter Extremes with that nice kind of uh, odd hollow point shape there. Again, about an inch and a quarter, not too bad out of the pistol platform. Uh, but once we switched over to the rifle guys, things shrunk up nicely. Uh, so with the standard H&N field target trophies, the all lead non-copper coated versions, we had you know four shots right in about three quarters of an inch with one flying up high on me, probably my fault. Uh, but the Hunter Extremes, guys, again, this is definitely going to be the go-to pellet, at least in these two guns that I tested. Uh, very surprised that both barrels seem to like this pellet uh, since it's so heavy and CO2 guns aren't pushing them that fast. But we're going to go ahead and chronograph this and see what kind of energy it's putting out. Starting with our pistol over the chronograph using those very heavy 18 grain H&M Barracuda Hunter Extremes, we got some really consistent results out of the pistol, guys. I was very impressed by this. Uh, about six foot pounds, you know, just under that 400 foot per second mark. So not a lot of velocity, a decent amount of power, you know, maybe for that like really small game within 10 yards, it's gonna be fine for that. Uh, but that standard deviation of just two feet per second and an overall extreme spread from shot one to shot like 45 of 36 feet per second. I mean, this gun is putting out very consistent velocity. So I was really impressed by that. And looking at the Chaser rifle, again, those same H&M Barracuda Hunter Extremes at 18 and a half grains, not as consistent. Uh, definitely see a bit of a power increase. You know, our max velocity was coming right at about 440 feet per second. So you're getting a good increase overall, you know, uh, almost a foot pound more of energy, but the consistency for whatever reason with that particular gun uh, was not there. So the consistency we saw with the pistol, phenomenal. Consistency with the rifle, just not quite there, uh, but definitely a little bit of a power upgrade and obviously having that quiet factor is a big plus in my book. All right, guys, so the Diana Chaser, the pistol, the rifle setups here in 22 caliber perform pretty well. Uh, good shot count, pretty decent power, about six foot pounds out of both. And that's with a very heavy pellet, that 18 grain pellet, something you're not gonna see a lot of CO2 guns pushing, but that's what performed best for us. 
uh, you know, the capability to upgrade this gun with, you know, the purchase of the magazine separately uh, to a multi-shot is huge in my opinion. You know, if you purchase the kit setup, definitely get yourself an optic of some kind, uh, but very easy to convert it over. I would like to see that pistol barrel also coming with the suppressor as well. Uh, I think that's going to be available down the road, uh, but Diana and, and Snowpeak, the manufacturer of the gun uh, for Diana, really uh, hits all the boxes with this. There are a lot of nice features here. Um, and, and really things that are well thought out to make the gun easy to use and user friendly. So uh, definitely want to check out here if you guys are looking for a good plinker or maybe even a good uh, short range pest gun. Uh, check it out here on pyramidair.com for the insider guys. I'm Tyler Patner. Hope you enjoyed the review today. Uh, as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys at the next one.